Today is the first video in my series called How to Reconnect with God. So I'll be discussing spending time with God and listening for His voice. So if you want to know how to reconnect with God, then keep watching to the end of this video. Hello everyone and welcome to Rosemary's Heart. I hope that you're having a wonderful day today because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Nicole and as a believer, my mission is to inspire other believers to develop an intimate relationship with God by building up their faith through the Word of God, empowering them to live their lives as overcomers and victorious through Christ Jesus. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, then I would like to officially welcome you to the Rosemary's Heart community. I received an email from one of my viewers requesting that I do a video on how to reconnect with God. So this is a three-part series that's going to give you the steps that you need to take if you've realized that you've drifted away from God and you want to reconnect with Him again. There are many reasons why someone may feel disconnected from God. It could be sin, guilt, disobedience, not feeling worthy, a lack of trust, or being too busy. Those are just a few of the ones that I think are more typical. When there's sin in your life, the enemy will use it against you and he'll make you feel guilty and unworthy. Or maybe there's something that the Lord told you to do and you still haven't done it. You've been procrastinating, you've been saying, okay, I'll put it off till later, but you just haven't gotten to it. Or perhaps you've just gotten too busy. Life can get in the way. We have jobs, we have kids, and we have other household duties. There are so many things that can cause us to drift away from God. But here's the good news. You can reconnect with God again. You can build an intimate relationship with Him. I know how it feels. I've been there. There have been times in my life when I felt like I didn't have a relationship with God because I wasn't making time for Him. I would realize that I wasn't where I should be with God. And then I would say, okay, I'm going to do what I have to do to get back on track. And then I would slack off again. The thing is, I had many excuses. I'm tired. I'm working. I have kids. I have a family to take care of. There's always many excuses that we can use. I remember when I worked downtown and I would have to travel two hours to work and two hours to get home from work. I would wake up at 4 a.m. just to get to work for 7 a.m. And I would leave work at 3 p.m. just to get home after five. And once I got home, I was exhausted, but I still had other responsibilities. I couldn't find time in my day to spend with God. And in my mind, I actually thought that this was a valid excuse. And at times I would feel overwhelmed and I would just feel like it was too much. But when I think about it now, maybe if I was taking that time that I needed to spend with the Lord, I wouldn't have felt that way because I would have received his peace. I was listening to a preacher one night and he said that God has to be our priority. We have to make God feel like He is important to us. So at that moment, I decided that I was going to get back on track and I wasn't going to use any issues as an excuse not to do what I had to do. So I decided to start waking up earlier than four o'clock. I said, okay, I'm gonna wake up at 3.30 a.m. so that I can pray before I go to work. But I soon realized that that time didn't work for me because I would wake up at 3.30 and I would be falling back asleep while I was supposed to be praying. So do you know what I did? I decided to go to God and ask him for help. Here's what I said. Lord, I want to spend time with you, but I feel like there is no time in my day. Please help me. You know what happened? God began to show me time that I thought I didn't have. I was spending so much time on the GO train, going back and forth to work. That was the perfect time for me to read the Bible, study the Bible, and meditate on the scriptures. Then when I got home and completed all my other household duties that I had to do, 
and I put the kids to bed, then I could spend half an hour with the Lord. And that's how I started to rebuild my relationship with Him. There isn't a specific formula. Everyone's schedule is different and things work differently for everyone. So the best thing to do is to start by talking to Jesus and asking Him to help you. Hebrews 4 verse 15 to 16. The high priest of ours understands our weakness, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So how do you talk to the Lord? You have a conversation with him the same way you would when you're talking to a loved one. You could start by repenting. Tell him that you're sorry that you allowed the cares of life to cause you to drift away from him. I promise you, he will not turn you away. I know you're probably thinking it's been too long. God's probably mad at me. He doesn't want to hear from me, but that's not true. That's deception from the enemy. God longs to hear from you. He wants to have an intimate relationship with you. John 3:16 to 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. I know we've all heard these verses many, many times before, but have we really thought about it? Think about God's love for us, how much he truly cares for us, how much he wants to have a relationship with us, that he was willing to send his one and only son to die for us so that we could be part of his family. Does that sound like someone that doesn't want a relationship with you? Not to me. It sounds like you are so important to him that he was willing to send Jesus so that you could become an adopted child of God. Don't let the enemy make you think that you've gone too far, that you can't come back and reconnect with God. You can, and God wants you to. Okay, so now you've repented and you've decided that you are gonna make every effort to reconnect with God. So what do you need to do now? You need to set a dedicated time during your day to spend with the Lord. Make it a daily appointment on your calendar that you cannot miss. Try to set up a specific time during the day when you know that you can spend uninterrupted time with God. I know it might seem weird to actually schedule time with God, but it works. It worked for me. Thank God that I no longer have to work at that job where I have to wake up at 4 a.m. I work from home now. So what I do now is I wake up before everyone else does and I spend quiet, uninterrupted time with God. I set my alarm for 6.55 every morning and at seven o'clock I get up, I leave my room and I go somewhere quiet where I can spend time with the Lord. Let me tell you, that doesn't mean that I wake up every morning and jump out of bed excited to get up. That is not the case. There are days when I don't wanna get up, but we can't go by feelings because if we did, then nothing would get done. Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your own good intentions. Sometimes I have to recite these verses to myself as a reminder. As it says, the flesh fights against the Spirit. I'm saying this to encourage someone that feels that they're not good enough because they force themselves to get up, to read and study the Bible and to pray. You are good enough. This verse was written by Paul and he understood the fight that we have between our flesh and our spirit. 
The fact that you push yourself to do something that you don't want to do because you know that it's the right thing to do should let you know that you are on the right track. The last step that I'll give you in this video is to listen for God's voice. I've never heard God's voice. I've never heard an audible voice from God. So you're probably thinking, okay, so what do you mean by that when you say to listen for God's voice? It's more of a voice that you hear in your spirit or in your mind. And God can also speak to us through the Bible. The important thing is that we need to be able to know when it's God actually speaking to us and not just our mind or a voice that we shouldn't be listening to. And that comes by building up your relationship with God. So as you get closer to God, you begin to understand who he is and you begin to understand his ways, just like Moses. Psalm 103 verse seven, he revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. Moses knew God, but the people of Israel only knew the miracles that he performed. They never took the time to get to know him. As you begin to develop an intimate relationship with God through prayer, through reading the Bible, you begin to know when something is his will or not even if it's not written in black and white in the Bible. As you begin to learn his character, you begin to know if he would approve of something or if it goes against who he is. Let me give you an example. I'll use my mother. I know my mother's personality and I know who she is. And that's because I've developed a relationship with her over the years. And I've gotten to know her by spending time with her and talking to her. Based on that, I know what she would approve of and what she wouldn't approve of because I know her character. Let's say I was on the phone with someone, so obviously I couldn't see them, but they were pretending to be my mom and they sounded exactly like her, but they said something that was out of character. I would immediately know that it wasn't her because I know her and I know what was said was not in line with her character. That's the same thing with God. As you get to know him and you build your relationship with him, you'll know if it's really him speaking to you or not. Does it line up with his character? Does it line up with Bible principles? That will help you to know if it is truly God speaking to you. John 10 verse two to five. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. I pray that this video was helpful and that you can now see that you can reconnect with God no matter how far you feel that you have strayed. He is a loving and a wonderful father, and he is waiting with outstretched hands for you to return to him. If you know someone that would be interested in this video or someone that wants to reconnect with God, then share this video with them. If you want more videos that will help to build your faith and help you to develop an intimate relationship with God, then subscribe to the Rosemary's Heart YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that bell because I will be releasing new videos every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you like this video, then make sure that you hit that like button. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions about spiritual growth that you would like me to answer. If you came across this video and you're not a believer, or perhaps you were a believer and you've strayed away from God and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, then say this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. I turn my back on sin and I repent and I trust in you. I confess that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I accept by faith the free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, then congratulations, you are saved. Welcome to the family of God. 
I will give you the advice that my pastor gave to us. Make sure that you pray every day. Prayer is talking to your Heavenly Father. Read the Bible daily. Find a Bible-believing church and attend. And last, tell someone that you are saved. Okay, so let's pray. Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 19. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know you better. I pray that the eyes of their heart may be enlightened in order that they may know the hope to which you have called them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints, and your incomparably great power for us who believe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye for now, and God bless. Hello everyone, and welcome to Rosemary's Heart. My goal is to provide you with resources that will help you to develop an intimate relationship with the Lord. You can check out my free resources in the description box below to get my How to Pray the Scriptures guide, How to Study the Bible ebook, and the Identity in Christ toolkit. My mission is to inspire other believers to develop an intimate relationship with God by building up their faith through the Word of God empowering them to live their lives as overcomers and victorious through Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and God bless.